Hello, dear viewers. Today, we are going to talk about some of the most deadliest bugs in the universe. An alien race that for all purposes is just pure evil and will do whatever it takes to reproduce. That's right, Claremont fans. We're talking about the Brood. Marvel's parasitic alien race explored. I am your narrator, Andrew Lapamardo, and this is Marvelous Videos. What do you think would happen if the xenomorphs from the alien franchise Franchise somehow gained intelligence and the ability to not just communicate but form alliances with other races? Well, the answer lies in Marvel's nefarious and cunning race of parasitic insectoid scavengers called the Brood. These creatures serve as one of the most sinister enemies of the X-Men, who themselves are known in the Marvel Universe to be one of the most resilient groups of superheroes. The Brood are millions of years old and have been used by many superior races, such as the Kree for genetic experiments and etc. And over a period of time, the Brood came to believe that their ultimate goal of existence was to conquer the universe. They share many traits with the Xenomorphs, like being ruled by an empress through a hive mind, and reproduction through the injection of embryos into host. But Marvel added several unique tropes to these supervillainous beasts, like speech and intelligence. In this video, we will explore the Brood and the pain they have been for the X-Men. Get your geek goggles ready, because you're in for a thrill ride. Now, as always, before we go into our explanation, oh, oh, algorithm gods, please be with us. In other words, if you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now let's begin. Number one, the Brood's first appearance in comic books. In one of their adventures, the X-Men find themselves battling a vicious insectoid alien, a creature that they haven't had the misfortune of meeting just yet. Cyclops' father, Corsair, and Storm were taking a stroll in Manhattan, discussing how Corsair had to abandon his son, but Corsair gets ambushed by a lone gunman from the Brood, named Skirkle. It seems that the lone warrior was, in fact, not alone. It was taking its orders from a shadowy winged figure who ordered the Brood Warrior to eliminate Storm and Corsair. It fires an energy beam of sorts called the Psy Scream. Storm and Corsair's realities shatter around them in mid-sentence and mid-thought. Almost immediately, their most primal fears and darkest emotions are ripped from their deepest subconscious, only to be reshaped, twisted, and given a more hideous nature before being unleashed. The two heroes had become insane, albeit temporarily, but this was enough for the winged figure, or Deathbird, to execute her plan. While Storm and Corsair dealt with their private nightmares, the X-Men arrived on the spot to help their comrades. Deathbird was about to launch an attack, but Cyclops thwarted the attempt. Next thing we know, Tigra launched an attack on Deathbird from the other side, only to get repulsed. Meanwhile, Colossus and Storm fight Corsair. Storm mistakenly believes that the X-Men are their enemies. The two rogues are stopped only after Professor X released them from their mind control of the Skirkle's Psy Scream. Ultimately, Wolverine manages to overpower the Brood Warrior, but to make things worse, there arrived other Prime Warriors from the Brood. Storm, Professor X, and Colossus find themselves in the line of fire. As the X-Men move into a building to fight off the Brood Warriors, they find Wolverine struggling. Although the Brood is seemingly defeated, Colossus is left grievously injured, while Professor X himself has gone missing. The comics never really revealed the real intent of the Brood Warriors, but we can see Skirkle talking about a mother, which is a clear reference to the Brood Queen. Number two, who are the Brood? It must be clear by now that this formidable race of aliens has been in existence for several millennia and were first encountered on Earth in 2620 BC. This specialized race of scavengers can consume almost any available resource and has a one-point agenda of reproducing. They arrive at different planets to infest its denizens with their embryos, and such unfortunate creatures do the same to others. It was revealed in the comics that the brood originated in an entirely 
entirely different universe from ours. Their homeworld is largely tropical with 12% water and a high oxygen content. While the gravity is about 80% that of Earth, at some point in time, the Kree experimented on the Brood, much like the Xenomorphs from the Alien franchise. The Brood were ruled by an omnipotent monarch called the Empress, who controls the Brood Queen in thousands of planets across the cosmos. But unlike the Xenomorphs, the Brood are not mindless beasts who live to kill and kill to live. They are sadistic and nefarious creatures who enjoy inflicting pain and suffering onto others. More than 8 million years ago, the Brood were captured by the Kree and were experimented upon by them. The Kree wanted to make weapons out of the Brood, only to be used against the Shi'ar. However, as time passed, the Brood became more and more intelligent and powerful, and made it their destiny to conquer the universe. They started by taking over the spacefaring race of aliens called the Akanti, who once cured Storm of a Brood infection in 2620 BC. During the reign of Pharaoh Consecumwe, the Brood arrived on Earth with the aim of conquering all of Earth. However, the invasion was ended by the combined power of the Knight of Khonshu and Emotep. Having said that, there has been evidence of a class of Brood called the Benign Brood. These creatures are pacifists who understand emotions such as honor, friendship, and compassion, and can thrive alongside other races without struggle. The Brood considers these Brood as an abomination and label kindness and compassion as diseases. Benign Brood are almost always killed by the usual Brood. Number 3 the Brood Biology and Reproduction Brood reproduction is a very tricky and ghastly affair. While it is not known if they can reproduce amongst themselves, it can be said without an ounce of doubt that the brood reproduction is possible in all sentient and species, especially the most intelligent ones. The brood reproduce somewhat similar to xenomorphs by injecting an embryo into a host. But the process is closer to a few insect species from the real world, like wasp. In almost all cases, the brood embryo remains dormant until a possible host presents themselves. Furthermore, most hosts are not even aware of themselves carrying an embryo within themselves. Once an embryo has been injected, it starts to rewrite the genetic sequence and DNA of the host, which turns them into more brood than the base species often destroying the mentality and consciousness of the host. However, subjects with extremely strong willpower or superhuman immune systems can resist this absolute loss of consciousness. And if you want to see the best visual representation of that, check out the cover of Uncanny X-Men number 234. Number 4. The Brood are back. The story begins with Wolverine and Storm fighting Stonewall and the Crimson Commando, while their mutant colleagues were busy with taking down Juggernaut. But somewhere in the Diablo Rio Mountains, something worse was taking shape. A spacecraft entered the Earth's atmosphere and crash-landed in the mountains, where a few campers were going about their activities. Alerted by the explosion, they went to investigate, but they were going in for a slaughter. The campers were massacred by the brood, with the exception of a paramedic named Harry Palmer, who was used by the insectoid alien race to serve as the host for the embryo of their brood queen. The story then moves to the present time, at least with retrospect to when the comic was written. We see Harry Palmer going about his business and inspecting a mutant who had suffered a heart attack when his mutant powers of breathing fire were activated. Initially, it seems that Palmer is a normal medic, but as soon as he was left alone with the mutant, Palmer's brood personality took over him, and he infected the mutant patient with a brood embryo. Later that day, Palmer returns to his humble place and feels unusually tired and drained, which is when he has an epiphany. Palmer only feels this way when he aids mutants, but he doesn't realize the reason behind such a trend. Clearly, Palmer is not aware of his brood personality or the embryo that lives within him. Palmer meets Colossus and Psylocke, who were waiting for him in the apartment. They try to reason with him and tell him about his brood infection, but Palmer feels threatened and tosses the mighty Colossus through the wall. It's made evident to everyone, including Palmer, of the incredible superhuman strengths he possesses. 
He then tries to escape in his car, but is stopped by Longshot and Dazzler. Palmer attacks Longshot with the car's door, but misses. Next thing we know, Palmer is taking down a hydro pole, creating massive damage and danger because of the live wires. Although Storm takes care of the live wires, Palmer manages to escape. But the X-Men were hot on his trail. They regroup, and Wolverine was tasked with tracking the Palmer, who had boarded a city bus to evade attention and lay low. However, his plans were thwarted by Rogue, who attempts to take him down, only to get easily overwhelmed. Palmer was about to infect Rogue with another one of his embryos, but was stopped by Wolverine, who punched through the bus window, pulling him out. But Palmer escapes once again, as Wolverine chases him down to an alley with a dead end. By now, Rogue has arrived on the spot, but along with her, two cops reach the place, and Wolverine realized that they had been infected by the brood. He kills them, but Rogue perceives that Logan has gone rogue, and tries to stop him. Rogue stops only when other X-Men convince her otherwise. But it was too late. Palmer had summoned a large number of semi-transformed brood who surround the X-Men. Number 5. X-Men vs. the Empress's Firstborn Jean and Cyclops had been vacationing near the Grand Canyon with her family when she built a psychic bond with a woman who happened to be a brood queen. Somewhere in the American Southwest, Hannah Conover had been living amidst humans as a woman who could heal people with her touch, but in fact, she had been infecting them with the brood embryos. Unlike other brood queens, Hannah was fully aware that she had an embryo living inside of her, but she was further different from other queens. Even after years of serving the brood empress, Hannah had managed to retain bits of her humanity and was realizing what she had done. Since all members of the brood share a hive mind, Hannah's mind was connected to the Empress, who saw her as a rogue because of her humane thoughts, her care for fellow humans, and her love for her pastor husband. The Empress had resolved to eliminate the rogue queen, and was sending prime warriors called the Firstborn to accomplish the task. Just as Hannah woke up from this psychic conversation, Jean woke up from her sleep because she had been a witness to the same. In fact, she saw the Empress's home planet and the power she held. She immediately contacted Professor X back at his mansion and described what she had experienced. He advised her to track Hannah, but not to engage. While Jean and Cyclops left their vacation to find Hannah, Professor X summoned the other X-Men, including Wolverine, Storm, Cannonball, Bishop, Beast, and Iceman. Jean and Cyclops found Hannah Conover and her husband, but they were too late because they were attacked by an alien. The Firstborns had already arrived on Earth and crash-landed on the Grand Canyon's tip. They were guided by Josie Thompson, the same brood who had infected Hannah in the first place. She escorted them to Hannah, where they attacked her. However, Hannah was accompanied by two of her broodlings, who immediately came to her defense and attacked the Firstborns, who easily overwhelmed the broodlings and proceeded to eliminate two cops who had arrived on the scene. Fortunately, Cyclops and Jean Grey arrived on the scene and saved them. The hero couple was having a hard time battling the extremely powerful Firstborns, and they would have been defeated had it not been for the rest of the X-Men who arrived with the Blackbird. While the Beast escorted the civilians out of harm's way, the other used their full might to kill the Firstborns. In the end, the combined forces of all the X-Men could take down just one of the insectoid aliens, while the others escaped. They all rendezvoused near the Blackbird, where a heated debate about Hannah's future in the Firstborns was going on. While Wolverine wanted Hannah and her broodlings dead, Jean and the others thought that she wasn't a lost cause, at least not yet. To make things worse, Hannah's broodlings arrived to take her away in order to protect her. However, Hannah convinced them that the X-Men were not enemies. The woman was tired of being the reason for violence and bloodshed, and instead of finding a solution, she begged those around her to kill her instead. Hannah was convinced that even if the X-Men and her broodlings managed to kill all the Firstborns, the Empress would send more of her insectoid assassins after Hannah, the Rogue Queen. 
She tried to reason with them to kill her, but they wouldn't listen. Which is shocking, you figured Wolverine would have been all over that. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And Hannah telepathically commanded her brings to attack the X-Men while she escaped. Interestingly enough, the order was to only delay the X-Men from going after her and not to harm or kill them. Once she was far enough, Hannah called them back but the X-Men lost Hannah. However, Wolverine had caught her smell and went after her, while Jean followed him. Storm ordered the X-Men to divide into groups of two and search for Hannah, but Hannah and her brood were in mortal danger from the Firstborns. Who had found them? They killed her broodlings and were about to take her life, but she was saved by Wolverine which surprised the Firstborns, along with the rest of us. It wasn't before long that the entire mutant cavalry reached Ground Zero to join the fight. The Firstborns were so strong that Bishop's attack with Cyclops' strongest beam couldn't do much damage. Meanwhile, Hannah's husband saw an explosion on the horizon and knew that his wife could be in danger. Naturally, he got into his jeep and drove towards the battleground in the desert, only to get caught by the Super Sleezoids. Learning from the hive mind that they had her husband, Hannah couldn't control it any further and gave in to her brood side, turning into a full-blown brood queen. She appeared before the Firstborns and asked them to let go of her husband in exchange for her surrender. Although Hannah managed to take one of them down, she gets surrounded by the other Firstborns. For the Conovers, hope was difficult to find, like water in a desert. But the Reverend prayed one final time, and God sent the X-Men. Wolverine had once again followed Hannah's smell and found her. While the others fought the Firstborns, Jean sneaked to the Reverend and told him about their new plan. They were going to freeze Hannah and put her in a cryogenic sleep. That would stop her mental activity and cut her from the brood hive mind, making the Firstborns and the Empress believed that she's dead. This was the only way of ensuring that the Empress didn't send any more of her assassins after Hannah. The plan worked, and not only did the X-Men kill all the Firstborns, but also brought Hannah safely to Professor X's mansion. It turns out that Hannah was the living embodiment of hope. When it comes to an understanding of the brood and finding a cure for those who had been infected. This was all for this video. Do stick around with us for some more awesome content on Marvel, DC, and everything else. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to smash that bell icon to get notifications. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.